I stayed with Mr. John Carberry at Neary on his spacious coffee estate. Here's his pet dog and monkey. They are inseparable pals. We left the coffee plantation for the game country on a hunting trip. And it was not long before I saw a rhinoceros beneath me. In order to reach the rhino forest, we had to cross this river. This old native acted as our hunter. The scar on his forehead is a souvenir of the Kaffir Wars. He was not long in bringing us to the tracks of our quarry. There were horse flies in profusion and they bit us unmercifully. We expected Mr. Rhino to charge at any moment, for we were close to him. When he did charge, I was unable to get a film, but dropped him with a shot through the shoulder. The natives cut out the horn and strips of hide. As we returned from the chase, we passed this waterfall on the edge of the forest. I next decided to film Kilimanjaro, known to the natives as the God of Thunder and I had to surmount dense clouds. At last the great mountain came into view, sparkling and glistening like some giant gem in the afternoon sun. And gradually, the summit was reached at a height of 20,000 feet, or nearly four miles high. When I returned, darkness had set in below me. Towering 17,500 feet above the forest is Mount Kenya, and at dawn I set off to film the summit. The mountain is certainly one of nature's masterpieces, as may be seen from this picture. One would not expect to find snow on the equator, but here it is in abundance. I next set off for Lake Nakuru, and for some of the way was accompanied by another machine from which this film of me was taken. To the right and below may be seen Lake Naivasha. I passed over the extinct crater of Mount Alongonot, said to contain big game. Note the little crater on the side. Lake Nakuru is reached and I landed and took a film of some of the flamingo. They are a wonderful sight from the air as may be realized from the countless millions seen in this picture. Pink mass around the whole lake. Coming down lower I saw some giraffes close to the edge of the lake. Nairobi from the air, little, little town. I passed over hundreds of miles of this kind of country before I reached this spot in northern Rhodesia where the natives were afraid of my plane. 6,000 feet below me is the Zambezi River.
At last, Pretoria, the capital union of South Africa, is reached. Johannesburg is only 40 miles from Pretoria, and on my way I flew along the Gold Reef. All around me were gold mines, which perhaps produce more gold than any other countries in the, in the world. Finally, Johannesburg, better known as Joburg, is reached. After another 10 hours flying, I had covered the remaining 900 miles to Cape Town and passed over Table Mountain, on which is seen the aerial railway station. Below is Lion's Head Mountain, with Cape Town docks in the background. Making my way along the coast, I arrived at the aerodrome and had completed my journey. <laughs>